first guest, Mr. Petty Murphy himself, to talk about his bad dating experience. What's, what's going, going on, on? Uh, What's going on, man? How you doing? Oh, you know, just living, trying to stay alive the best I can. Absolutely, absolutely. God first, everything last. Absolutely, amen to that. So, I hear you have a bad day experience that you want to talk about. Man, I I do, and I, I just want everybody to know that I had good intentions. <laughs> the date just went bad, literally. Okay. So this happened in um two thousand. I'm gonna say this happened in two thousand and fourteen. Um, okay. Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day weekend. You know, everybody's going out. I'm single, you know, whatsoever. So everyone's gone out on Valentine's Day. My date was the night, the day after, you know, side chick day. Okay, <laughs> or better. side nigga, or side nigga day, whatever you want to call it. Side nigga, side chick, it all happens. We still side. <laughs> it all happens. I ain't one of them. So um, <laughs> this chick um, hit me up. I'm not going to mention her name because for purposes, she might try to find me. Because I'm going to tell you that this is how crazy this this date went. All right, so I make the plans to go on the date. So we went to go went to the movies. Um, before she came to pick me up, she didn't tell me that. Well, she told me that uh, she had to bring her daughter along on the date. So if you fellas, if you know, if the kid has to come with you on the date, you ain't getting any. Unless you know, you're like, uh, uh, unless you got the prescription from Casey Anthony. To stop oh, the kid, you ain't getting any. Prescription from Casey Anthony. All right. Yes, Doctor Casey Anthony, MD. Uh, <laughs> so we went to the movie. We went to see the movie about last night. Uh, the movie with uh, Michael Ealy, uh, Regina Hall, uh, yeah. Joy. Uh, yeah, we went to see that movie. That. Yeah. And yeah, a good movie. Now, number one, why would you bring your kid to a R-rated movie where there's nudity and everything else too? Two, why couldn't you find the kid a babysitter? Don't matter. <laughs> Don't matter. It's like maybe the kid will fall asleep and you don't get lucky. Just be the nice guy. Be the nice guy. Be the nice guy. Okay. So we get we go to the movie. I paid for everything. They even bought the kids something to eat. You know, so I was like, well, okay, buy the kids something to eat, you know, show show some initiative, you know. Like I said, man, I was trying to score. All right. I was trying to be I was trying to I was trying to be Jordan game six. I'm trying to go score. That's right. Get that ass. Yeah, you did right. So we go to the movie, and she's like, "Okay, I gotta go to Walmart, right?" I'm already having a bad day. The spirits, because the kid's becoming a brat. I'm the starting the spirits right here is getting funny. And so she's like trying to hold my hand and stuff, and calling me baby inside Walmart. And my homeboy worked at Walmart, <laughs> and he seen me, right? He's like, "Yo, man, is that your girl?" I'm like, no. Well, it's not my girl. I just took her out on the date. And this girl going around calling me baby and all this other stuff too. And I had to think back when I was before we set this up. I was like, man, Kevin Hart said this. I was like, come on, bro. You see me with this chick. You see the date is going bad. Come on, man. You should know the play. Help me. Help me. <laughs> Yo, you got my phone number, man. If I, if I send you a text message, SOS, that means call me, say it. You know, do something like Dave Chappelle did, you know, like Samson, Mrs. Sheila, Mama Finale, you know, do something like that. No, all he did was laugh, put all the other homeboys on Facebook. So, like, God. So, I, mean, I got the homie sitting here, so, so how your date going? Like, yo, how the fuck you going on a date? Yo, homie, like, see, this is why you don't, this is why you don't tell niggas shit. You gotta tell black people. You know, people like Carlton Banks that will keep a secret. You can't tell a, a street nigga none of this shit because they're going to tell everybody. They're going to go on Facebook and like, yeah, this man went on the jeep with an ugly chick and her kids. This is bad. So I'm sitting there. We're on our way to her house, right? So kid goes into the room and we're just sitting there, right? And we're just sitting there in her room. And she asked me if I'd give her a massage. I'm like, yes. Give her a massage. Give her Get her cool yeah. and everything else too. I'm right, a slide in that. there. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm a slide in there. Yeah, that's right. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna slide in there and then babe, I'm gonna hit her with that booty tang famous line. Baby, I'm gonna sign your pity on the runny cop. I give her the massage, right? And then we just sit there. So you wanna watch a movie? It's like sure. 
You know what movie we ended up watching? Twilight. Oh. 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 Yes. I, I, yes, yes. For those who don't know what Twilight is, it is the black version of the Notebook. Don't watch neither. Uh, <laughs> and I'm just sitting there, right? And I was like, no, she she got t-shirt on, no bra on, probably got no drawers on, and basically she's like sleeping. I'm sitting in the bed, heads up, eyes open, dick hard. I'm like, damn, this is bullshit. I paid seventy something dollars. Dealt with a brandy kid unexpectedly because she get a babysitter. I give this bitch a massage and I get no hands, no head, no thank you. You're welcome. None of that. No. So I basically stayed at her house. So basically the that morning, she made me breakfast. I mean, that's the least she can do. She did make me breakfast. It was horrible. It was horrible. Breakfast. I want some ass. I want you to grab yes. something, I, touch I something. Some, please, I, I please, some, please, I, please, please I brush mean, I off have, the dick. Do something. Don't just. I, I mean, I mean, give me some more. I mean, I got more than wood. At least help me. You know, help the brother out. You know, no, no, she couldn't eat breakfast. It was horrible. The breakfast was horrible. It's like, come on now. I've had better service at the Waffle House in the hood. Did she, this, cook, this is horrible. Did she at least cook the eggs before the bacon? I couldn't tell. I didn't give a damn. I didn't want to leave. <laughs> and basically, she held me hostage for a few hours, right? Oh so, like, yeah, she kept me a few hostage. So it's like two o'clock in the afternoon before I got home. And so she pulls up and dropped me off, and we sit there and talk. She's like, "So, um, do you have any free time? What's our? Do you want to come over for dinner?" So I had to think of a lie real quick, because first of all, this date is horrible. This date is over. And normally when you have a bad date like that, normally I try to dine and dash. <laughs> but no, nah, I couldn't do that. So I was basically kidnapped. Um, I told her, nah, I got things to do. You're not going to go to church and all this other stuff, too. I ain't been to church in like so many. I was lying and that was no, had to no ask God for forgiveness and everything else. I went, well, can I call you? I was like... Yeah, you could call me and everything else too. I gave her a hug, trying to make it like, uh-uh, my, my breath. It wasn't, you know, my pride was hurt. You know, I got possibly blue balls. You know, I possibly, you know, you know, I, I'm already getting roasted on the internet by the homeboys. They sent me text messages laughing and sending email joys and, and memes and everything else too. And you no, know, my homeboy would hit me and say, so, did you, did you tap that? It's like, nope. <laughs> He said, did she, you said, what do you mean she didn't tap like, bro, she twilighted me. She basically got a free date out of me and a babysitter <laughs> and a, a babysitter and a, and, a, and a job interview for a potential stepfather. Shit. I'm like, no, nah, bro. And the, and the breakfast was horrible. I was, I was like, uh, uh, no, no, no. So I decided to give her a second chance because I told my mom about it. My mom was like, boy. Give that girl another chance. It's like, all right, I'll, I'll give her another chance, right? So I do go to dinner that Wednesday. I go to, I go to dinner at her house. Now, this is bad. Now, this is where the bad part get in. She didn't tell me that she had a boyfriend. Oh, God. <laughs> she didn't tell me she had a boyfriend that just got out of work release, right? <laughs> And I'm sitting there with the son and the daughter. We playing PPS for three. It's full roll up. Looking at me and I'm looking at him. He's looking at me and I'm looking at him. And then I'm looking at the chick. And he's like, who's this chick? I was like, man, I ain't nobody, man. I'm the neighbor, bro. I gotta go, man. Hey, man, it was nice knowing y'all kids, man. Hey, stay out the drugs, you know, stay out of dark alleys and everything else, too. And I left. So she hits me up like a couple hours after he leaves. She's like, why did you leave? I was like, because you didn't tell me that you had a man. And in my world, that's false advertising. You can't sit there and lie to me and play me. Did you have me, then basically you got a second date out of me because my mom guilt tripped, that, uh, uh, guilt tripped me. So basically my mama don't like you now. So it's like now, well, it's like, what's your problem? What are you looking for in life? And she's like, well, I was the... 
he just came over. I didn't, I didn't know that he was uh, coming up. I'm like, yes, yeah, she did. Yes, yeah, she did. The lady said, like, I don't know how he knew. I, yeah, you did. You know how you knew where you where you lived. He probably came over before why you want to work release pass on the weekends. He knew exactly where you where you live. You step there and lie. So, moral of the story, fellas, is this because this was a bad date experience. Moral of the story is this. Always do your research. Do your background check. Check your references. If she got more than five mutual friends that you know, ask them about her. If she got five homegirls that you know that she hangs out with, ask them about her. And the reason why my mom said give her a second chance is because my mom used to work with her. So my mama set me up on the, to fail. So me and my mama didn't talk to her. I didn't talk to my mom. I didn't even give my mom a birthday gift. Her birthday was a few days yeah. later. I was like, I didn't get her a birthday gift. Like, she said, she, 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 you lied to your son. That's you set me up on a bad date with a bad woman who got bad ass kids. And I think she had roaches. I don't, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. I did see a roach, though, know, greet me at the door. That was dressed up in a butler suit from like a uh, little, uh, a uh, plankton from um, SpongeBob. You had a little slew on and everything. It looked like a little Jimmy the Cricket looking motherfucker. You know, basically reaching at the door like, oh, okay, never mind whatsoever. But, fellas, that was the worst dating experience I've ever had. And I swore to myself that I would never, ever date a chick with ulterior motives, you know? Okay, so I got a few questions to ask you. One, okay. were you how long were you talking to her before y'all went out? I was I would say barely like what off and on. It was like because there was a concert that we were supposed to go to, but she started to act through gazy, so I sold the tickets to my mom and my stepdad. So I just basically put a random post on Facebook. Like, hey, which one of you single ladies want to go on a date? Movies whatsoever to have some fun. She was the first one to answer it. So it's basically like the TV show for Mad TV, Lowered Expectations. Yeah, that's what that was. I lived a lowered expectation. I mean, and so it's like off and on every now and then. I wouldn't even talk with this chick. Basically, it was basically, I was I was looking for Mariah Carey. I ended up getting Mariah Carey. That's why I ended up getting that night. I was looking for a Mariah Carey, not a Mariah Carey. And... You know, and so yeah, it's probably off and on every now and then. It's like, yo, hey, how you doing? Hit a like, you know, whatsoever. Like, hey, keep up the good work, man. Keep God first, man. You know, you got this. <laughs> that was that type of conversation. I didn't think it was going to turn into that. I was kind of like, you know what? After that second day, it's like, you know what? I should never have talked to her in the first place. It's kind of like Carl Thomas, and I wish I never met her at all. But that that's how it was, man. So yeah, I haven't talked to that chick since. The last time I heard, she married dude, and yeah, that's good. I don't care. <laughs> oh, this is just oh my goodness. Okay, and then here's another thing. So when I was like dating heavily, I'm in a current relationship now. Um, I would never ever this is just me, I don't know about anybody else, but I would never do a date where we go to the movies. Like that's just because you really don't, you really can't like talk to someone, see what's going on, read them, and be able to have a good right. time to interact. So why would you pick a movie though, especially for Valentine's? Uh, hey, I, it was either dead or go to the club and get shot at. So I had to pick the most safest spot. So I was going to a movie theater. But, um, I mean, if, I mean, if you would have gone to the movies and got shot at, you probably could have picked someone else up and just left her there. That way, you didn't have to go with her kid. I mean, that is true. I mean, they started shooting. I already know where the exit door is at. Like, oh, bitch, you know, that would have been like that. But I learned a lot, especially with my current girlfriend. I've been with her for six years. Our first date, technically, this is how our date came about, how we ended up dating. Um, there was another chick, uh, a friend of mine, threw a birthday party for me, threw a little concert and stuff, too, and my girlfriend sings. Okay, so I'm in there suited and booted. And this chick, this other chick come up to me. Now, this one is funny, too, because she kept in and sat down and talked to me. Now, this chick and I met a few couple times, had a couple video shoots whatsoever, but never got on that level. All right, it's tax season. So I got my taxes before everybody else had to wait for the IRS. This is 2017. I got my taxes like three weeks before then. So the chick hit me up on Facebook. You know, I had just broke up with a chick who lied to me. Um, basically, we were supposed to see the movie um, 
what was that damn movie? Split. We were able to see the movie Split. And she lied to me and said that her grandmother was sick. So I took a nap, went to sleep, woke back up with the Snapchat, saw her, and some ugly Stefan Diggs looking ass motherfucker at the liquor store, her ex. And I'm like, you know what? I'm done paying this bitch's fucking car note. I'm done paying this bitch's fucking water bill. I'm done buying this bitch Denver Bronco shit. And I fucking hate the Denver Broncos. And that's what I'm passion. Thank you, Grandpa. God rest your soul. And I hate John Elway. And I hate Russell Wilson. I'm playing Future next time I see... If I see Russell Wilson, I'm playing Future. Uh, uh, let's see what else. I mean, this... I was like, this bitch done fucked up. Fumbled the fucking bag. Fuck this bitch. I'm not talking to her. So I basically broke up with the chick. Okay, so my boy goes to his birthday party, and um, my girl now. I mean, we were. I mean, we were friends on Facebook. You know, basically talked back and forth before we even met each other. This is five years before we met each other, mm-hmm. and this chick sat down next to me, asked me about the taxes and stuff too. And she's no, she's got a nice little body, but she didn't tell me she had a husband and four kids. Like I said, everybody, that's false advertising. Okay, ladies. You cannot sit there and lie to a good man like me. That's false advertising when you find out you have a husband and four kids. That's how motherfuckers get fucked up. So my girl comes up to me, comes up to the table, we're sitting there. She puts her leg on the table and said, Are you gonna and I heard this most angelic voice? Are you gonna come watch me sing? And I looked up, and if you remember the movie Dodgeball, where homeboy seen the ugly chick that was on uh Bill Stiller's uh, yeah. team. And the song Lady in Red played, uh-huh. that's what happened. Because she had a red shirt on, beautiful blonde hair, nice body, fat ass. And I was like, yes, I'm going to come watch you sing. So just like me, because I'm a, I, I, my girlfriend's white, I'm a black man. I followed the big fat white ass, watched her go sing. That chick, I left that chick at the table, by the way. So no ladies, I'm not an asshole. I, I was just being smart. That girl, the woman I'm with saved my life. So, um, I go watch her sing this stuff too. And me and her go sit there and talk. And then the next day, our first, we ended up going on our first date. But we went to a karaoke bar. And so this is how the con- this is how the conversation started. Like I said, we, me and her were talking before we even met each other. So there was conversation in between. But now face to face, we had it that night. And I had just so happened, got messed, got drunk and, uh, I lived around the corner from this little taco uh, Mexican uh, restaurant, and um, I went and got me some chicken tacos. Best hangover food, man. Authentic Mexican uh, restaurants. Get some chicken tacos. Get to make sure the tortilla is fried. Get all the trimmings, including the green sauce and sour cream. Plenty of sour cream. Mm-hmm. So I post That's a right. picture on That's Facebook. Right. I, I post a picture on Facebook, and my girl was like, "Do you live on the south side of town?" It's like, "Yeah." She's like, "So do I." You want to come over? I was like, yeah. I went to come definitely, yeah. I can come over tonight. Let's get me go hang out, do karaoke. It's like, yeah, whatsoever. Because we, we had a mutual friend of mine, my best friend, he is a karaoke DJ. So it's like, yeah, I know where he's at. We go de- uh, do karaoke. That's who I will go through. So my ex that I re- recently broke up with hit me up. She, um, she had moved. Um, her parents and her and her son moved into a house. They were broke and stuff and stuff too. So the ex hit me up for some money. And the number one thing is is that I can't let old people and kids go hungry. That bitch can starve to death. So I don't give a fuck. <laughs> so, but kids and, and old people and elderly people, I have a good heart. I do not like them to go hungry, especially watching all those um, feed the children videos over the years. So yeah, you know, it, you got a heart. So it's like, all right. So I gave her a big about like forty bucks whatsoever. It's like cool whatsoever. So I go on a date with my girl. We go do karaoke. We get to know one another, right? We, we get to know, really know each other and everything else too. So, um, a couple days later, my ex sees the pictures on Facebook, and I'm gonna tell you what my ex did because she's stupid because I, I stopped paying her bills and stuff too, and so she hit me up like, "So uh, you've been acting weird lately." Why haven't you been responding to my messages or no trivia crack requests? So if you guys remember the game trivia crack that everyone was playing with the trivia back in the day, yeah, she we would play and I would kick her ass in trivia crack and every and everything. So it's kind of like you know I'm getting to know this woman and you're hitting me up and fellas, 
and ladies, I'm gonna tell y'all straight up. I'm the type of guy. If I'm talking to one woman, none of you yeah. bitches matter. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. you do not matter to me. You, if, if you hit me up, I'm just gonna look at your messages and keep you on red. Probably won't respond back. Maybe a week or two weeks later. But she hit me up. My ex hit me up. She's like, "You've been acting weird lately. What's going on with you?" So I couldn't lie to her. I really didn't care if I told. No, didn't really care. But I knew it was going to hurt her. I told her. Well. I met someone. It's like, I knew you did. It's like, no, you didn't because you and I were broken up for two months and everything else like that, too. So um, when it comes to what I know now from learning from my bad day experiences and with my girl now, basically, like you said, go out and get to know the person. I went out and got to know my girl. I know that she seems I know she has her ambition and her drive. I've met her family, her entire family. I'm the first black guy to actually accept it. That's a son. It was like, cool. He's the first white girl my mom accepted. And so I'm like, that's, it works even better. Um, but no, the girl changed, the girl I'm with now changed my entire life. Um, pretty much, um, basically, um, she changed my life. And you got to find somebody that's going to change your life, man. Um, I recently um, reunited with my father. Um, and me and my father were separated uh, for 34 years. And we, re we reunited and, you know, I found out about it because I thought my aunt, his sister, was one of my mom's uncles, my great uncle, side chicks. Because I've been around my uncle so much and she would always wish me happy birthday. I was like, who the hell is this woman? Come to find out my mom had conversations with uh, my aunt. And she told her sister, my aunt, that you know about this conversation. So I asked my girl, I was like, should I reach out to my father? I mean, I don't hate the man. I mean, you know, I know the situation, but I want to hear his story and give him a chance. And she was like, yeah, you should reach out to your father. And I did. And, you know, my father loves her. He loves my girl. He's like, you basically gave me my son. And you told my son to basically be a man. So when it comes to that bad dating experience that I had, with this that chick and then of course my ex all of that brought me to this relationship right here and six years later hey i learned a lot from this woman this woman saved my life and i learned that you know when me and my girl go out we go out and have fun and that's what dating's about we go out and have fun we get to know one another but yeah those two bad dating experiences yeah, I will never live that down. I will never live that down. And um, my ex actually came up to Kansas City yesterday. She went to the Chiefs and Bills game. So she's the reason why they lost. Her and Taylor Swift. <laughs> okay, well, we're just going to segue from that. We're not going to do that here. This is all about meeting and uh, there being experience. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's good to know that you know something good did come out of it. I'm very, very happy to hear that. And um, so I want to segue and say, hey, once you go ahead and I believe you have a, a podcast, right? That is correct, everybody. Uh, I do have a podcast known as the Petty Murphy Project. This came about during the uh, pandemic. Uh, not the pandemic, the pandemic in 2020. Yes, the pandemic. Because I'm a hey man. If a lot of people know, I'm a comedian. Um. I have uh, opened up for people like Comedian Hope Flood, um, Clifford Owazu, and a lot more, and I'm a traveling comedian. And when the pandemic happened, I was supposed to go to uh, New York City and do two sellout shows. Well, the pandemic happened, and um, the pandemic happened, and no, nope, you couldn't do anything. So um, I had to think about how I was going to um, entertain the people. I wasn't going to sit at home all day work from home, smoke weed and DoorDash all day. I had to do something constructive when I got off from work Monday through Friday. Yep. So a friend of mine, a friend of mine a year before said, hey man, people say you need to have your own podcast. All right, I had the idea in my back pocket. You know, I started my podcast in 2020 during the uh, pandemic. I have grown this bad boy to be approaching 600 episodes December 23rd. Okay. Um, right. I have, I you know, the podcast is on all streaming platforms. You can watch it, the live interviews. 
like we're doing right here on Facebook Watch and on YouTube at the Petty Murphy Project on the channel. So yeah, if you look up the Petty Murphy Project, you will see live, you will hear live interviews, you will see live interviews, you'll even hear some old school music. And I want to say, eat a dick, Spotify, I want to play my old school music and y'all want to talk about, oh, it's copyrighted. No, it's not if I'm talking. So, um, but uh, no, um, definitely guys check it out. Um, this podcast has really opened up more doors for me as well. Um, it allowed me to tap into my journalist background as I did go to college for a journalist degree. So it's a lot of fun. Um, so you guys tap into that Petty Murphy project. And I definitely love to bring you one on the show as too as well, man. Um, because I got a second podcast getting ready to come out real soon. It's called Morning Cup of Comedy. And it'll be coming out during the night. So we're basically be going over comedy clips. Um, just basically like you and I are doing right now, shit and have some fun. So look out next week. I'll be shooting my second podcast and be known as Morning Cup of Comedy. And of course, it'll be on all platforms as well. Again. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, uh, Patty, for coming on and sharing your <laughs> intriguing daily experience. <laughs> I definitely I'm telling y'all, man, everybody, if you're watching, when someone hits you up and wants to go on a date, treat it like it's a job interview. Do your background <laughs> check. All right, check your references, dot your eyes and cross your T's. Make sure you're not dating a crazy person. All right, make sh make sure they're not related to a Kardashian. Okay. And well, brother, I want to say thank you so much for coming on and telling me your experience. Um, you hear, you heard it here first, exclusively on YouTube under the sarcasm orgasm. So, sir, thank you so much for coming on. I salute you for <laughs> your great endeavors, and you take care, man. And I'll talk to you soon. Okay. And hey, you too, sir. Thank you. All right, man. Have fun. Be blessed. You too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, people, that was Mr. Petty Murphy himself. He came on and told us about his bad dating experience here on Bad Dating Chronicles, where we talk about your dating experience and how it chronicalizes to where you just do whatever you can to learn from it. So this has been an episode, has been a funny episode, and I'm so glad for the, my guest that I have. So um, y'all take care, and we'll see you next time when we have another Bad dating experience on the bad dating.